Good afternoon, good evening, welcome back to Cookie Land's Global Cooking Challenge. Uh, tonight is Sunday, uh, February the 21st, and we are working on week and country number 173 of 193 countries as we work our way, learning to cook by doing uh, the food of a different country all the way around the world from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. Uh, Niels, thank you for liking the restream. Uh, good evening, uh, Fred. Thank you for joining us. Uh, tonight we are cooking the food of uh, Timor Leste, aka East Timor. Uh, they are a tiny nation uh, located on the eastern half of the island of Timor, which is located in the uh, archipelago that is Indonesia. And we're going to get into all the details of this little known country later. We have a lot to prep. Um, and uh, there's going to be kind of a slow cook because this codfish calderada is a, a Portuguese dish. Oh, hello, Anthony. Thank you for the restream. So, uh, get cracking because we've got a lot of prepping to do. To do, ta da. So, we are obviously listening to music of Timor, the island of Timor, again. Uh, we have a lot of interesting stuff to tell you about this country, but again, um, since I have so much prep to do, plus I have the uh, issue of 45 minutes of this stew cooking that uh, I uh, was gonna have, I was gonna do a second dish in that time, but uh, it would have required making a trip far away, and we didn't have the time for it for this one ingredient, so. We're gonna have the stew cooking for 45 minutes, but in those 45 minutes, you're gonna learn all sorts of interesting stuff about East Timor, which is a very interesting, sad, but very interesting country, and hopefully it's getting less sad now. So, we got that going. Uh, so, here we go. We are starting with uh, getting our rice cooker, because it's gonna be served with rice. And, again, I always forget, uh, ouch, my rice. Uh, to turn on the rice cooker until it's too late, so I'm gonna set myself an alarm for that. Uh, I'm not doing anything fancy with this. I could, but I'm not going to. One odd thing about this particular dish, and it's just kind of the way it is, I'm using uh, this kasmati, sort of fake basmati rice, which is kind of more Indian. Uh, the food of Timor Leste, aka East Timor, is uh, an interesting mix, and history is all wrapped up in all of this. Uh, it is um, a mixture. They don't really have, well, they do have a cuisine, um, but it's a port very Portuguese influence, uh, yet it's also influenced by Chinese and Indonesian and um, associated uh, nations um, because of history and geography. Anthony, I did say hello, didn't I? Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, now I need to put two cups of water in there. One moment, please. How's everybody doing? How was your weekend? It has been um, quiet. If you follow me on Snapchat, you saw that we had a, in our little town of Jupiter, Florida, we were having a seafood festival this weekend. We went. It was not exciting. Uh, it was even a little on the trashy side, if I dare say so. But then uh, we're gonna get this over here ready to be plugged in. Uh, remind me to turn on the rice cooker at 7.10 p.m. Let's see if it works. Okay, good, thank you. Alrighty, so now that we got that going, um, I need to uh, set a pot of water to boil because we're gonna start peeling tomatoes. Uh, in a pot. Okay, 
So this is um, actually kind of a straight up Portuguese dish with uh, a couple notable changes uh, because it is, you know, East Timor, uh, which is in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, and I'm going to get some juice here. There we go. than that. Um, I don't want to be like giving up all the, all the info on East Timor right now because I have a, I have a lot of time to kill. Once this gets going. So I'm saving, I'm saving up the info. Uh, as for myself, I just did a 12 and a half mile run, so that was good. Uh, it's all good here. Had a nice weekend. That's nice. Is it warm there? It was cooler today. Hello, nice kitchen. Thank you. I wish I could take credit for it. Um, it sort of came this way. Uh, Ken, thank you for the comment. Um, thank you. I quite like it though. Uh, when I bought it, I said, oh, it's a lovely kitchen. Uh, I'm never gonna get to use that. Uh, little did I know that in short order I'd be, uh, cooking for the world. Cooking the world for the world, so. I guess I lucked out. Okay, so now that we have that going, uh, I need to score the tomatoes uh, because they are going to go in the water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come back. Come back. Come back, okay. Dee -dee -dee. Oh, I'm just tempted to, you know, get into the whole East Timor thing. Uh, it's a sad country, but like I said, it's it's getting better, um, which is good. They've had, you know, the news has been good uh, for the last, uh, you know, few years and getting better. So um, it was a, an exceedingly sad place with a very interesting, uh, long, complicated history. Uh, but thankfully, things are on the upswing. So there's that. Has anyone heard of T East Timor before? Uh, Paul, uh, Paul, 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 hello, how are you doing? Good evening to you. We are cooking the food of East Timor. Again, if you are uninitiated to the challenge, started in, uh, 20, uh, 12, I need to wash these. Even though I'm peeling them. And boiling them. I uh, started in 2012 uh, after not ever learning to cook and 30 years of staying out of the kitchen because I almost accidentally killed myself one time because I didn't know food basics. Um, I uh, decided to cook a dish from Afghanistan. The dinner went very, very well. And I thought, hey, you know what? I got the OCD. I love geography. Um, I need to learn to cook and uh, I need to write. So I started my blog. Good evening from the UK. Good evening from Florida to you. It's much later where you are, obviously. Um, but I decided to start uh, by cooking a dish for an alphabetical order, uh, do, covering all 193 UN member states, and doing one country a week. Uh, so we started with Afghanistan in September of 2012, and now it's uh, we're only 20 weeks from the end, and we're here doing Timor-Leste. It would have been under E for East Timor, as most people know it, 
but the official um, sort of, I forgot what the word is, demonym, is uh, Timor-Leste, which is, you know, the Portuguese. And it's very interesting, the name and what it means and stuff. But uh, has anyone heard of it? Doubtful anyone's been there from our, our little troop here. But you never know. Yes, it is 11.01 p.m. Good evening, good night. Um, I am making my own notes here. Okay, uh, while the, we're waiting for the water to come to a boil, we are going to get going on the various ingredients to this. It's basically a fisherman's stew, what this is. And uh, a Portuguese traditional fish, fisherman's stew uh, with a couple twists to make it more East Timorous. Timor-esque. Um, it's a really, I'm, I'm itching to get into the history of this. Uh, but wait, uh, weather. Uh, it is 71 degrees. It was cool and overcast. And so I thought I was going to run. My legs have been hurting me a little bit because, you know, I've been running so much and stuff. But uh, I was feeling a little, I, I didn't know if I'd be able to make it, but I started to run and I said, eh, I'll be okay. And next thing you know, I was like, oh, I'll just keep going. I'll go this way. And I'll go this way. And then I'm stuck and I'm like, okay, now it's 12 miles later. And I'm thinking, okay, I think I need to go home now. So it was fun. I'm doing a half marathon in April. It's going to be my second one. Um, although I've run half marathon distances a few times uh, just for giggles. Ah, so we're taking our red... Um, onion and we're cutting that into um peeling and cutting that into um como se dice what's the word they're looking for rinds slices rings we're basically we're slicing it uh do 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 do, do. come on hey uh i uh well what the heck uh east timor without getting to the entire history of it uh just yet uh, I've mentioned my... Well, no, because it's part of the history. Okay. Should I get into it? Sure. Okay. Husband says sure. Okay, here's the deal. East Timor is an island, as we saw, in the middle of the archipelago that is Indonesia. 40,000 years ago. Between 40 and 30,000 years ago. So, you know, wrap your head around that. People first came to the island uh from the general area of sri lanka then you know after oh some you know 27,000 years so wrap your head around that huge number more people started to arrive this time they came from uh melanesia uh which is kind of the island nations you know in that in that general neck of the woods and then people started to arrive from uh southeast asia and from china and uh, they kind of became the Timores, Timorese people. Uh, the island is shaped like a crocodile. If you look at it very closely, it's very small. Uh, but the island is shaped like a crocodile. And their creation myth is that uh, once upon a time there was a crocodile who for some reason was in need. And a young boy uh, saved the crocodile. So to pay the boy back, the... Uh, crocodile turned itself into an island uh, so the boy could live on the island and that's kind of their story of how they came to be uh, thank you for the like um, uh, Abdullah and thank you for the like uh, Tachi how you doing so good seeing you again how are you doing no thank you well thank you for passing through we are doing the food of East Timor Timor Lest um, the uh so what happens is that uh now we have we've zoomed up to the 1500s yes and the portuguese show up and the portuguese decide that uh, these people have sandalwood and they can get um sandalwood and slaves and other things from here and the portuguese were looking to have uh their uh, empire and so if you look at the map in the history of the Portuguese Empire you'll see that they had um, 
uh, territories in Africa and Angola and Mozambique, and they tried to join, you know, the east and the west of Africa and never really succeeded. And uh, they had Macau in China, uh, which has now sort of been returned back to China. And uh, so this was kind of like one of their, you know, stations uh, along the way. They didn't pay close attention to it. And they uh, kind of neglected it, but it was there. And they, the Portuguese were not, you know, friendly colonizers um, in most places where they were. And uh, so, but they stuck around there for a few hundred years. Then um, come World War II, so we jump, you know, quite a ways here. After a few hundred years, World War II, Japan comes and takes it over in the middle of World War II. And so they kind of own, they have it for a while um, until the war is over. After the war is over, it goes back to Portugal. And uh, so the Portuguese, again, aren't really, you know, paying close any real attention to this. And then in 1975, the government in Portugal changed. And uh, after their, you know, uh, government changed once and for all over there, uh, they, uh, the movement was to get rid of all their colonies immediately. Uh, no, not at all. Okay, oh, I heard of it, I'm assuming. Okay, so, um, so uh, the Portuguese dropped their colonies right away, and they weren't very cool about the way they did that. Um, they kind of left havoc in their wake as they took off. Like in Mozambique, they poisoned, no, they poured concrete in the wells. Um, so it was not a friendly, friendly leaving. Um, but in Timor, they took off. And then uh, East Timor, so the thing is, the island of Timor, in this time that the Portuguese had it, the Dutch came to uh, control most of what is now Indonesia. And uh, so, like in the 1800s, after a big fight between the uh, Portuguese and the Dutch, uh, they kind of decided there's a line. The island of Timor is divided in half, for the most part, with the east side being Portuguese, with the capital of Dili, and the west side being uh, Dutch as part of what's Indonesia, minus a little section. There's a little section of East Timor, which is... Now, East, east Timor is about the size of Connecticut, just for, for you know... Comparison's sake. There is a little, uh, it's called an enclave on the other side of um, a, uh, hello, thank you for the like. No, hold on, let me, yeah, I'm hitting this with my knuckle. Uh, uh, Gistogram, thank you for the like. Uh, catch you later, have a good one. Thank you, Anthony, thank you for coming by. So, the Portuguese and the Dutch uh, divide up the island minus well, this one little section which remains Portuguese on the coast, which is about the size of Jackson County, Tennessee. It's about 308 square miles. So there's a section of East Timor, which is inside of West Timor. Uh, Gal Flores, thank you. Um, so that is, it was Portuguese Timor. So uh, 1975 comes along and the Portuguese drop their colony. It's like a hot potato. Speaking of potatoes, we're going for tomatoes. Hi from Honduras. Buenas, como te va? Salud. Okay, yep, might as well bring you over here. We're gonna get back to the history of Timor, East Timor in a moment, but first, because we are going to score, uh, we're going to peel our tomatoes, or at least start the process for it. This water is finally boiling, and I need a slotted spoon for this. Slotted spoon, so we're going to count. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi, eleven Mississippi, twelve Mississippi, thirteen Mississippi, fourteen Mississippi, fifteen Mississippi, out you go. Out you go into the ice bath. Out you go into the ice bath. Off. Uh, Throza Timor less land of brave people. Uh, they they are very brave. They uh, put up with a whole lot of bad stuff. Um, so uh, very strong people. They went through a lot of bad stuff. We're going to get through through to more of what that was in a minute. But while that sits in the ice bath over here.
We're gonna let that sit while we continue with our onion, and then we'll come back and we'll peel that tomato. Okay, back to uh, East Timor. So, and if you know, you know, if you've been, if you know, please, you know, feel free to pipe up. Um, in any case, uh, the uh, there is a one sort of patriot of East Timor who wrote their national anthem, which sort of translates to homeland. Um, and he wrote the song, which is remains her national anthem. He is in East Timor uh, in 1975, the day that independence is, you know, given to East Timor. And nine days later, the Indonesian army comes across the border and uh, takes over. And there's warfare for 25 years. And a full third of the population die over those 25 years. Imagine a third of entire country's population dying. It is just tragic and horrible and sad. Uh, after 25 years in 1999, they finally, you know, between the UN and everyone kind of, you know, trying to calm everything down some, they have a referendum. I've uh, never heard of Timor Leste. Yes, we're, we're telling, we're talking about it now. Uh, again, uh, I'll show you, uh, Tony, I'm going to show you again where it is in case you are joining us late here. Uh, we are, it's in, in, uh, Indone in the Indonesian archipelago. It's like uh, just north of Darwin, uh, Australia, south of the Philippines, and this little crocodile-shaped island, and it's the eastern half of that. So that's where it is. It is the first, well, we're gonna get to, uh, I'm going chronologically here. So, uh, what happens? So the Indonesian army come in, everyone dies, it's very sad. 1999, they have a referendum, uh, where uh, everyone decides on whether they want to be independent or not, and kind of overwhelmingly they vote, yes, we want to be independent. And so things are sort of going okay, except then, the, of course, the Indonesians weren't very happy with this. Uh, so uh, with the support of the Indonesian army, the, uh, a group of, of anti-independence Timorese uh, lay waste to the country. And they just destroy everything. They destroy 100% of the electrical system. They destroy all the schools, all the hospitals, everything is just totally destroyed. 300,000 people get, become refugees having to go across the border, living in West Timor because, you know, they're fearing for their lives. So uh, after a while, you know, the UN stepped in again in Australia and such. They, uh, you know, calmed everything down. It took them about a month to get in there. And they, you know, UN peacekeepers came in and kept the peace until it was sort of, you know, stable but they stayed and they stayed and they stayed and now i gotta watch this i'll be right back but slowly the country puts itself back together again they have elections in 2007 uh, and the elections go well, and uh, there was a point that there was a possibility of more conflict again. And uh, thankfully, that uh, they managed to hold that off. There were elections again in 2012, and things are now kind of on the upswing. Beautiful country. However, it is the smallest and the poorest nation in Asia. Uh, they are beautiful, though. They have. Beautiful sights, mountains, and beach, beaches. Again, not a large country, but a beautiful one nonetheless. Um, the, the name uh, Timor Leste is rather interesting because uh, Timor means, uh, came from a Malay word meaning east. Uh, Leste is a Portuguese, and so the Portuguese decided to call the place Timor. Uh, it's the eastern side of the island, the eastern part of a sort of a, 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 another set of islands. Uh, so it's the eastern everything. So they decided to call it Timor Leste, which is the east of Timor. But literally, the country's name means East East. So we're e eating the food of East East. Uh, they have a rainy season and a non-rainy season, and it's called the hungry season because uh, the way the weather works there, it's very hard to grow anything. 
because you can't really rely on it. They have uh, have volcanoes and cyclones and hurricanes and earthquakes and they have tsunamis. They have regular tsunamis. Uh, it is a very, very difficult place to, to live, um, but somehow they manage. My global traveling friend, uh, who uh, I, I keep talking about, uh, he got the world's record uh, for going to every country on earth without flying. Um, he was uh, towards the end, well, not, uh, like about a third of the way into his journey, he was trying to get through the Pacific Islands and he was in Indonesia and he was in West Timor and had to get into East Timor. You know, the UN peacekeepers, which have since left, now they don't have to have the UN peacekeepers anymore. You know, things are, things are calming down, it's calmed down, so, and they're rebuilding. But they are the youngest, one of the uh, youngest populations uh, of any country on Earth because, you know, when a third of your people, you know, die, uh, you gotta kind of start over. Um, so that's kind of why, because there's kind of a lost generations there. Uh, however, uh, things are on the upswing. Uh, when my friend got there, he saw the UN peacekeepers everywhere, and he said, that's pretty cool, you know, at least, but it's kind of scary because, you know, they're there for a reason. And uh, he was wandering into some event, and next thing you know, he like, bumps into and starts taking pictures with and talking with the guy who's the president. And he's like, I'm right here. There are UN peacekeepers every 10 feet. And I, I, me, me, random guy with a backpack is just walked up and started talking to the president. That's kind of scary. But he's got pictures he took with the president, now the former president. They've changed president since then. Uh, I'm not doing too well with peeling this. You're going to cut yourself. Uh, use a potato peeler. Well, I need to cut the bottom of this off, for one thing, but uh, that's not the worst idea in the world. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Let me get this out of the way. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to try. I'll give that a shot. Well, obviously, I didn't... Um, Put have it in the water long enough. So um, uh, the uh, the flag of East Timor is located right over my head over here. Uh, two T Thai. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, the uh, the yellow represents colonialism. The red represents the struggles. Just a thought. Not a problem. I appreciate any help. Uh, the, uh, see now this one's coming off a little better. The, uh, the red represents the blood and, of struggles and the, uh, the star represents hope for the future. Uh, they became independent officially in 2002, meaning them they are the first uh, independent nation of this century. Uh, I'm seeing you saying, uh, toward you, like peeling an apple. Yes, that would be nice if I knew how to peel an apple. Uh, but uh, I'm not so good at that. Uh, but yes, I scored it and I, and I um, blanched it. Uh, but I don't do too well with this. Um... I, it's not my favorite task by a long shot. Not by a long shot. I hate it when it says, "Oh, you have to do this." I'm like, "Ugh, I'll core, I'll core a tomato. Um, I'll seed a tomato, but peeling a tomato is a drag." Uh, incidentally, this put spin it. Use your thumb. I think I got it. Uh, just this one last piece, so. Yeah, I, that, that's a skill that I need to, you know, sit down and, and study before attempting it live. Um, but nonetheless, I got it all. Anywho. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Now we're going to core it. Sp spin it with, well, it's already, it, 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 it has, it says, it is accomplished, set accompli. Okay. So now we're going to core it. 
hopefully will be done at some reasonable time here. I mean, this is a 45 minute actual cook. And uh, I was gonna save up all my Timor info for then, but now I've blown it all on, on, on my prep. So we're gonna have to come up with a topic for our, our, our cook time. Either that or you're gonna be staring in a pot and I'm gonna be like doing something else. So if anybody has any interesting stuff and seen any good movies, we saw the movie Room nominated for the Oscar. Difficult subject matter, wonderfully done. Uh, and I'm using the wrong knife for this. Uh, wonderfully done. Surprising, and that the, the performance from that little boy is just astonishing. Thank you. Uh, the uh, how does a five-year-old kid give a performance like that? I don't know. Uh, but it was an amazing movie. If you don't mind, you know, heavy subject matter, done in a in a you know, in a very good way. See it. Room, starring Brie Larson, nominated for the Oscar. Uh, I don't think a whole lot of people are going to see it, though. It's a, it's what they'd call small movie. I mean, there's like, what, six people total in the cast? So. Uh, what are you making? Thank you. Uh, I'm making, for Timor Leste, I'm making a, uh, a codfish caldera... caldereada. Which is a uh, fisherman's stew, which is uh, traditionally Portuguese. Since uh, Timor Leste was Portuguese uh, colony for... for several hundred years, uh, the Portuguese food is very evident uh, in um, Timor-Leste. Uh, the, there is an influence of the Indonesian, since the Indonesians, you know, were, are there, were there. Uh, and it is a predominantly a Roman Catholic nation, uh, making them one of only two Asian countries to be majority Catholic, uh, or majority Christian, uh, that and the Philippines. Uh, the uh, because of that, the food traditions are all different than they would be in, um, say, Indonesia at large. Although the food from Indonesia is very different. I am Portuguese. Oh, you are Portuguese. Well, there you go. Well, you could have translated. You could have helped find me find recipes. Uh, because um, uh, Spanish is my first language, but uh, when I read the stuff in Portuguese, I get a vague idea from the Spanish, but not close enough. Uh, to, to have confidence that, you know, I've got something good because, you know, something in English could be a crappy recipe and, you know, it takes me a while to figure that one out. So, um, but yeah, so if you're Portuguese, uh, a great cookie movie to see is Burn. Oh, cooking. Movie. Oh, that's the, the thing with, uh, what's his face? Um, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. Um, yeah, I, w I was thinking about that. I, I didn't, I could, couldn't tell if it was a good movie or not, to be honest. Um, but uh, I will take your recommendation. Thank you. Uh, but this is the Portuguese fisherman stew. Uh, it's uh, in Portugal. It's normally done with white wine, uh, but here they're doing it differently. They do it with beer. We're, they we make this dish. They make this dish with beer, and uh, I'm guessing the traditional Portuguese dish does not use lemongrass. Uh, I um, I took a peek at a traditional Portuguese version of it and said, oh, this is like, basically the same dish with just a couple adjustments, and I think that's indeed what it is. Uh, there's uh, a website I found that uh, had uh, talked about the food of East Timor. Uh, anyone who I saw online trying to cook the food of East Timor has done uh, basically one of two things, uh, a version of which I am, uh, of which uh, we're making on Tuesday for night two. Curb, curbish? I don't speak it, I just eat the great food, ha ha, ha ha. Uh, you, oh, you don't speak Portuguese? Ah, okay. So, are you saying, are you of Portuguese origin? Like, like your parents are Portuguese? Is that, is that what I'm, is that what I'm getting? Uh, I would hit the, uh, thing to see your name. Uh, other than that, kale, choice, potatoes, navy beans. Uh, chorizo potatoes and navy beans. Yes, this, um, I did see something like that. Uh, this does not use those ingredients. Uh, but this, well, this is a fisherman's stew. Uh, so this, we're using, the, using cod for this. And the more I thought about it, the more weird I realized it was to be using cod, 
uh, for this dish because cod is from the North Atlantic and not the South Pacific. Uh, however, uh, it being an island where it is, and the blog that I read uh, about East Timor it does look like, yes, uh, they know that most of their food is imported. They use olive oil, which is, you know, not from nearby. Your name is Carl. Hello, Carl. Good to see you. The soup is called Kirsch. Ah, Creole. Kirsch. Okay. Good to know. Kirsch. It's a soup. I don't make a lot of soups. I wound up making a certain amount of stews, but lately, since I've been on Meerkat, I try to avoid um, uh, uh, making stews, uh, although I like stews, uh, but one of the reasons I tend to avoid stews is because, uh, for meerkat, they go on and then, you know, then they cook slow, and then I'm like, yeah, now what? And I need to entertain people. Which is exactly what's gonna happen between 7.15 and 7.45, or and 8. Yes, codfish is popular for the Portuguese, yes. And most island countries, um, uh, at least in the Caribbean and and uh, other parts of the world, uh, salted cod is the way cod is. This is a fresh cod dish, which is maybe like the second time I've used fresh cod. Here's our tomatoes at long last. Okay, let me clean this off and we'll kind of keep moving. I uh, have a few more things to chop and cook, uh, prep. Well, I'll be right back. Uh, I like steak, chips, put an egg over it. Ah, that sounds good. Where are you? Oh, you're, where are you? You're in the UK? Was I saying? Remind me where you are. So I know. Okay, gotta clean the knives. Must maintain a clean workstation. As we do the dilly dilly dilly. Yes, we cooked Portugal uh, back when you're in the letter P, and that actually was on Meerkat. You can find everything at clickyland.com, pictures, links to the original recipes, the videos. Hello, Adrian, thank you for the restream. How are you doing from Massachusetts? Ah, well, lots of Portuguese in Massachusetts. And uh, Rhode Island. Um, very much so. Your last name wouldn't be Tavares, would it? It's a very popular uh, Portuguese last name, particularly in the New England. But you probably already know that. Like the musical act Tavares, they were, Port they were Portuguese origin. Uh, okay, we've taken care of that. Now, garlic. We need four cloves of garlic. Yes, we did Portugal. Um, you can find everything at clickyland.com. You can see pictures, links to the original re recipes, um, pick, uh, information about the countries, uh, how everything went. Uh, Scores, yes. Oh no, so oh Suarez. Oh, see the Portuguese are the oh instead of instead of Suarez like Spanish. Interesting. I love the differences between Portuguese and Spanish. It's always like one letter off. It's like we're. It's like just 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 a lot of judging. Uh, we're looking for four cloves. That's three. Hit me with one more. One more clove of garlic, please. Thank you. Acting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So four cloves of garlic. We're going to peel and crush them. I cr I'm crushing your head. I'm crushing your head. Okay. Mm -hmm and peel. That's trash over there. Dilly, dilly, dilly. And two. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. You can just have my hands are all wet now. Uh, Massachusetts, eh? So it must be very, it must be, is it snowing? I know you had like insane cold weather up there recently. I have a cousin. She's put posting on Facebook that was like, you know, some somewhere below zero. It's like, ugh, that's cold. That is damn, damn cold. You know what about cold? Uh, I'm from Florida. I live in Florida. I was born in Florida. I lived uh, for half my life outside of Florida in D.C. and in Ohio. So, you know, I've been in freaking cold weather. 
Um, but when I first moved there, I didn't understand certain things about cold weather. For instance, um, the uh, the difference, the reason for uh, the Fahrenheit and Celsius, because in Celsius, you know, zero is freezing, right? And in Fahrenheit, it's 32 degrees is freezing, which seems kind of arbitrary. Um, but I wondered why why zero is where it is, you know, on Fahrenheit scale. It doesn't seem to make any sense, right? I'm thinking it's just kind of there, you know. And I when I first went through my first winter, I realized now I understood why. Because zero is the point at which your body goes, ENOUGH! The reason the Portuguese food is so spicy is because the wars in the past and the Arabian culture showed these spices in a curry indeed. Yes, the Portuguese brought stuff around um, from one place to the other. Um, for instance, in uh, uh, this is uh, Timor-Leste, when we were cooking uh, Tanzania a couple weeks ago. Uh, the Portuguese uh, had that for a brief while um, and they didn't leave too much influence but one thing they did do is what they did everywhere and the Spanish did everywhere too um, and their own colonies are crushing our garlic here by the way is um, that they went to you know their individual places their colonies and took stuff and uh, brought it to other places and Portuguese really did uh, do you know quite a job of you know putting a specific spin on the cuisines of each of the places that were colonies. I've been to the Azores. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, you live in Florida. Where in Florida do you live? Because it is a. Uh, it was nice here today. Cloudy, and I could go for a good, almost 13 mile run. Um. But uh, they left, uh, they got the chili peppers, the peri peri peppers uh, from uh, Angola and took them around and the cassava and they just brought everything around from one place to the other. Uh, Azores, they sound beautiful. Azores, Azores, Azores. Uh, I think my parents went to the Azores. They were on a long cruise one time. I know they went to the Canary Islands. That's Spanish. Jacksonville, okay. Hello from Jupiter. Okay, so we've got our four cloves of garlic and now for our red bell pepper. Red bell pepper and green bell pepper. So let's uh, take care of those. We've got our green and red bell peppers. I think I have, I have family in Jacksonville, actually. Jacksonville, Florida. Yes. Hello, neighbor. Home of the St. John's River. The only river in North America that flows from south to north. Or at least in the United States. Random Jacksonville trivia. Okay, so we've got our red and green bell peppers. Let me wash those off, just to be on the safe side. Okay. okay. Talking to Carl here. Carl from Jacksonville. Okay. Yeah, so I was saying they had, um, the seafood festival here this weekend, uh, which maybe they've had before and I didn't notice. Uh, it was, I'm sure the people in town loved it. I did not, I was not impressed. I could do this one of two ways. Um, I'm going this way. This uses a little more waste, but I'll live. Yeah, there our little seafood festival was uh, this little park around the corner from here. And there's like a lot of people, but it was kind of trashy. I mean, it wasn't super <coughs> trashy, but it was a little trashy. And let's just say there were vendors with signs making suggestive puns, which, you know, I'm not against, you know, but not in context, that was just tacky.
just tacky, tacky, tacky. And there was like more than one of those, which was just, you know, like when you see a tacky t-shirt shop with, you know, lewd things on t-shirts, like that kind of tacky. I have a question. I, I've asked, I think I've asked this question before. I don't think I've asked it here though. Maybe I only asked it to people in person. Um, this is based on kind of where I was born. These are green and red bell peppers in case it wasn't obvious. Um, from, let's say from where you grew up. I'm trying to get this to roll out. That's not working. From where you grew up, uh, how far would you have had to go to find a tacky tourist shop, a tacky gift shop, a tacky gift shop that has, you know, tacky gift stuff. Because uh, when I think, you know, I was just basically, you know, a five minute drive from a place where you can get, you know, tourist snow domes and things like that, it was just weird. And I go to Miami Beach and I see like all the insanity that's for sale there. I'm like, okay, well, that's my hometown. Not Miami Beach, but close enough. Okay. I'm trying to get the uh, ribs out of this because I'm going to dice this. And normally I wind up throwing those in because I'm lazy. And I know I'm not cutting this right. My form is horrible here. Absolutely horrible. Don't do what I'm doing. Uh, I was just remembering there's a way to cut this and roll it out. And obviously I did not do that right. Maybe I'm supposed to cut the bottom off too. Uh, so, okay, we're gonna cut these, chop them roughly. Do do do. Hey, hey. Uh, hey. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, by the way, you can follow Cliffy Land right over my head. You can uh, follow on Meerkat here. Be advised of when the future streams are scheduled and starting. You can follow at uh, cliffyland.com. Technically, it's a Tumblr, so if you have Tumblr, you can follow there too. Maybe 20 minutes to Newport, Rhode Island. Ah, there, yep, yeah, well, Newport, home of the great jazz fest. I know someone who lives there. Um, it looks absolutely beautiful. Yep. But there's just something weird about, you know, living in a place where tourists are. Uh, because when I lived in, in, in Ohio, it was the opposite. There was no, there's no tourists. The only, you know, people, only out of towners who would come in would come in for some, you know, cheerleading festivals, cheerleading competitions, you know, or volleyball competitions. Um, there was no, like, tour buses and stuff. Oh, thank you for the follow. Cool. Thank you. Um, the, uh, but you can follow on Facebook, uh, Cliffy Land, the Global Cooking Challenge. Just look, search for Cliffy Land on Facebook. Uh, you can follow Cliffy Land on Twitter, or on Instagram, or on Pinterest, or now on YouTube. Uh, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you feel like seeing any of the uh, videos that you missed, you can skip all the boring parts where I'm chopping stuff and wow. get right to where the actual cooking happens. Uh, but it is super cold and expensive, yes. Uh, yes, in fact, um, there are boats here in the uh, marina, basically across the street. There's uh, at least two or three of them from Newport, Rhode Island. They're yachts. They're not the biggest yachts. They're, we've, they're bigger yachts that are, you know, like another quarter mile away. Uh, we see them. But yes, we got lots of, uh, lots of Massachusetts license plates, a few Rhode Island license plates, but the, uh, but some of the yachts are, they just come down for the winter time. And they go back in the, in the summertime, and then they leave a big hole in the water. So when you buy a boat, what you buy is a hole in the water, you can just pour your money into it. That was like the old joke they used to hear growing up. Alrighty, so we've chopped our green and bell peppers. I've mixed them together because I don't give. Okay, um, now let me dump this stuff and we're gonna get to our carrots. I'm getting a little dehydrated. I'm still kind of not fully recuperated from my run here. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, meanwhile, um, 
Gotta run, but it's good talking to you. Enjoy your stew. Thank you, thank you, Carl. Thank you for coming by. I very much appreciate it. Okay, we can get our carrots out. How many carrots do we have left? We don't have as many as we need. Life's rough that way. We need it for, we have two. Life's rough. I've got those um, uh, field carrots in there if you need more. Carrots. You know what? I think I'll use those. You mean your little baby carrot things? Yeah, that's in the drawer there. Yeah, I'll use those too. Thank you. Okay, uh, my peeler is here. Let me wash these. Uh, you can see the excitement of washing me wash, wash the carrots. It's 6.41. I'm surprisingly doing okay on time. Surprisingly doing okay on time. So far. Famous last words. Uh, okay. So we're gonna fill in with these cut and peeled carrots that the husband uses for his uh, lunch. Uh, Laura, hello, Laura. Thank you for liking the restream. Hello, good evening. How are you doing? How is your night? How was your weekend? It's been, it's been quiet here, which is good. Didn't have to drive great distances this weekend with South Florida drivers. Got 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 a, a brief respite from that. Uh, got to go out and see the beach, which is you know outside, uh, which is nice. Hello, Yusef. Uh, hello, Yusef. Greetings. Uh, Salam alaikum. How are you doing? Good to see you. We are making our, uh, from Timor-Leste, our codfish calderada, which is um, a, a Timor, uh, East Timor version of the Portuguese fisherman's stew. Um, there's a very similar to the Portuguese uh, fisherman's stew uh, with only a couple slight changes. Um, and uh, those will be important. The fun one happens at the end. We're saving that for later. So uh, our onion, uh, so our carrot. So I'm supposed to be four carrots. Are these? Do these don't zip, do they? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, there's supposed to be four carrots, and I didn't have four carrots, so I'm stealing some of the husband's uh, little peel and cut carrots here from his lunch. Uh, in case you know these carrots, they're not you know. Actual tiny carrots, it's weird. They take big carrots and just cut them into small sizes, which is really weird. So I'm just gonna guess what four carrots is gonna look like. This is supposed to be roughly chopped. Uh, I'm back. Uh, sorry, internet connection, very funny. That's okay. Uh, hope, it fix, hope it fixes itself for you. Okay, I'm randomly guessing that that's gonna be four carrots. Okay, maybe a little more. You never know how big carrots are supposed to be in these recipes anyway. All right, so we are going to chop these uh, slice thickly. Thick slices of carrots. Thick slices ye shall be. And lose the ends. Uh, I've been dying, di dying for Thai food since your stream. Oh, oh, hey, Lavender Famchi, how are you doing? It was so good. That muscle and curry that I did for uh, last Tuesday night was out of this world spectacular. My best friend, Cliffy. Yusef, you're great. Um, and uh, the... But it was, that muscle and curry was one of the best things ever. It was so crazy delicious. It was worth all that trouble you saw me go through. It was worth every last bit of it. It was out of this world, all, one of the all-time best. That's how good it was. It was so tasty. Um, what we're doing uh, tonight is this uh, uh, codfish caldorada, and it's, it's weird because 
this one blog where this uh, the idea of this originated from is someone from East Timor talking about the foods that you know he would have, and it's curious that all the, most of the foods he's talking about are all basically Portuguese dishes with some slight variations. But he didn't have actual recipes, so this other blogger took the idea and actually put together an actual recipe. Carrots. And uh, so that's what we're working on. Um, but it's weird that it's using codfish, and not only that, but fresh cod, not salted cod. Uh, because getting fresh cod all the way in Timor Leste uh, would be very difficult, because they're very far from the North Atlantic. Uh, which is where salt, it, where the cod comes from. Insane work, and you made it better than the restaurant. It was so good. Psst, don't worry about the spelling. Uh, it's fine now. It wasn't on 4G, but it is now. Okay, good. I'm glad that's working out for you. So, a uh, piece of ginger. Top drawer or bottom drawer? Maybe the bottom? Oh, no, here it is. Yep, it did. Something's sneaking out of here. Where'd you come from? Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm getting out a thumb-sized piece of ginger. Thumb... Thumb balina. Ta-da! Saving the rest. This is a lot of prep, uh, and then, uh, interesting the way it's layered. And then it sits and cooks, so... I have to think of a topic to talk for 45 minutes while it actually cooks. Um, unless you all came in late, later from the beginning and didn't hear me giving the whole history of Timor-Leste. Uh, so I could start all over again for, for the late shift. For the late show, for the people who didn't come in early. Um, coming early to watch me, you know, prep for an hour. Uh, but Timor Leste is a small little country, about the size of Connecticut. Uh, it is in the Indonesian island chain. Uh, it is the eastern half of the island of Timor. Uh, it became independent uh, after a 25 years uh, war with Indonesia and occupation uh, in 2002. And after a rough go of it, there's things are starting to turn around. Uh, they had um, uh, Cuba, known for its uh, great medical community and doctors, uh, sent over a whole bunch in I think like 2007 or so, sent over a whole bunch of doctors and just basically took it from a place that had no doctors to at least from one thing that I read, this is projected, you know, years ago to be, you know, in the future still. Uh, but they were projecting that Timor uh, would eventually be one of the places with the uh, highest ratio of doctors to people. Um, you're very educational and you produce a great stream. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming by. I so appreciate seeing you. Again, like I was saying, uh, I, again, I don't know who's, you know, just getting, you know, if, if everyone wasn't here for the first part of this, but uh, I am dicing this. I'm dicing this, I'm chopping this. I'm chopping and dicing, dicing and chopping. This is the ginger. Why did I put that there? That was dumb, hold on. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Where, now where was I? Yes, uh, Timor Leste. So uh, they speak Portuguese and um, and among other languages, a, a Timor-esque language. I forget the name. Uh, and then, of course, um, some people speak Indonesian also because they were they were occupied by the Indonesians. And the Indonesians have the other half of the island. Uh, Timor, East Timor, is about the size of Connecticut. Um, and also includes an enclave which is on the west side of the island, which is surrounded on three sides by West Timor, which is part of Indonesia. Um, so, which is about the size, about 300 square miles, called uh, about the size of Jackson County, Tennessee. If you happen to be from Tennessee, you would know how big that is. I looked it up. 
Um, but it's interesting, these little enclaves in certain parts of the world where you have a part of a country which is detached from the rest of the country and sometimes it's surrounded by another country. So, um, like uh, again with my global traveling friend, I was talking to him about this uh, thing because um, when he was traveling around the world he had to get these visas and you can only go into the country and out of the country, you know, once and stuff like that. And he was traveling through, I don't know, somewhere in one of the stands, I forget which it was. And he wound up going through, you know, something that was in part of that other country which is inside of this country and going back out and then he like had used up his visa and he was stuck. Because now he'd used up, you know, his, his, his kind of one get out of jail free card as it were. So um, that was very upsetting. And then in, um, I think it's India and I want to say Bangladesh. There, um, there's enclaves inside of enclaves inside of enclaves. So there's a place that's part of Bangladesh, which is inside a thing which is part of India, which is inside a thing which is part of Bangladesh, which is inside a thing which is part of India, which is inside the country of Bangladesh. So there are people inside these little, you know, islands that um, can't get out. Because to get out, you have to ask for a visa. And the only way to get the visa is in the capital, and the capital is over there. And you can't get out. So some of these people have, like, for generations, have never left their old village. It's craziness. Absolute craziness. Uh, so that particular one, I think the, just this past year, they, um, the two countries kind of settled on a way that, yes, people can get in and out now. You know, after, you know, what, 60, 70 years? Because when, um... Like, for instance, if you saw the movie Gandhi, you saw how what what had been, you know, India and Pakistan and Bangladesh, now, now these nations, you kind of one thing, and then they kind of got separated by religion, and everyone had to, like, you know, all the, all the Muslims had to go this way, and all the Hindus had to go that way, and some people stayed where they were, so that's where those little island pocket things happened. Ginger. Sad. That weird, yes. Crazy for them to learn of this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, but it's odd, that little, you know, area in East Timor, which is part, you know, over on the west side. Like Angola has a, Russia has one, which is famous. Which is over, you know, you got three Baltic states and then you got this little bit of Russia over there. And then Angola, in South, uh, Southwest Africa, has uh, the uh, enclave of Kabidna, which is this little notch, which is, you know, separated from the rest of Angola on the Indian Ocean, which is kind of crazy. Um, so, uh, lemongrass. Uh, what am I going to put this on? Uh, how about the... Uh, this seems like awful overkill. Um, I'm gonna stick it on a plate. Okay, we've got more lemongrass that we can deal with from last week. That means we have that much lemongrass left, which is usually twice as much lemongrass as I ever have. Thankfully, we are in Southeast Asia this week. Sadly, we're not gonna be in Southeast Asia for next week. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know how much longer that lemongrass is gonna work. The alphabet isn't going to be working with us this time. But we do have a Tuesday. So, we have our lemongrass. We are going to take off the ends and peel it. That came off nicely. And uh, I am going to <coughs> cut the ends off here and I'm going to cut it about there. And now we're going to cut it in half lengthwise, which is uh, curious. And I think I'm going to do one other thing too, uh, in addition to cutting my hands open, or trying not to. Okay. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. You can do it. Ta-da! 
Now, uh, it did not say this in the recipe, but having worked with lemongrass before, I know me one thing. I know one thing. And that is, normally I'll be using the rolling pin for this. But you want to smash the lemongrass to, you know, have the flavors come out. We're not eating the lemongrass normally. I mean, it can be eaten, but, you know, not as a whole, because it's a whole lot of a landing point. Uh, thank you for the uh, restream. Hello, Lydia. How are you doing? Hope you had a lovely weekend. And also, it did not say anything about tying it in a knot, but just from previous experience. Uh, having used lemongrass before, I'm tying it in a knot. Little tricks that I've learned along the way, so I can add things to the recipe that were not mentioned in the first place. Because the more the flavors come out, lemongrass gives things of, you know, the, the Asian food flavor that you're used to having in Southeast Asian Chinese, you know, cuisine and such. Yeah, uh, it's very fragrant. Lemongrass. There's a crappy restaurant in Columbus that men just stay in business forever called Lemongrass. We used to go there, wondered why everyone did. Still don't understand how they're in business. Um, okay, now we're almost, uh, we're to our last step in the prep here, uh, which is our cod. So we're getting our fresh cod. Thanks for the experience of lemongrass. Yes, lemongrass is wonderful. Um, and uh, it's odd that I don't normally get a chance to, uh, to cook with it because the way the alphabet in the countries land. And then when I go to knead it, um, the, uh, oh, <laughs> you can smell it. Um, the, this is the shrimp, this is the cod. Uh, this could be shrimp and cod in this, by the way, in case that wasn't obvious. Uh, and I have more cod. I have cod that I bought per previously and we had frozen. So we've defrosted the cod. So we've got older cod and newer cod. Once frozen cod and never frozen cod. So, uh, well, let me get rid of this. And you can stay there. Cod number one. So basically this is about a pound and a third of cod. And then we have about half a pound of shrimp. Uh, Clifton, how you doing? Thank you for the restream, my good man. So this is the fresh cod that I got from the fishmongers yesterday. It's been sitting on ice uh, since since yesterday afternoon. This is a nice chunk of cod. Much thicker than the one that's sitting on the cutting board already. They came from two different sources. So you can take a look at those right there. While I wash my hands. Like I said, it's very strange using fresh cod to be cooking in this particular country. Um, you'll see on Tuesday, the fish dish that we're doing there will not be using cod. We'll be using fish, uh, but not cod. Uh, because are uh, using something a little more appropriate. Oh my God, I can't believe we're kind of on time. Okay, so we're cutting this into chunks. Uh, into chunks. Okay. There's no skin on there. Uh, this is a Portuguese fisherman's stew um, since uh, East Timor was a Portuguese colony for about 300 years. Uh, the Portuguese left behind much of their food traditions. Uh, there's um, the same blog that kind of mentioned this in the first place. And again, it's really weird that um, uh, some... And again, you're going to see this more so on Tuesday than today. Uh, that uh, the Timoresque sources that I read were talking about using many of the flavors associated with Southeast Asia and Chinese cuisine. Um, and uh, meanwhile, other sources are saying, oh no, they don't, you know, put 
you know, spices in their dish. And I was thinking, I'm hearing two completely different things. And the one that's from, seems to be from there is the one I'm gonna trust. Plus, I like more spices and stuff. Uh, this has got uh, some heat to it, uh, which you're gonna see in a minute uh, as we continue our prep. I think we're gonna be finishing uh, around eight o'clock. Uh, I thought it was gonna be 7.45, I was shooting for that, but uh, that's not to be. Eight yeah. Just so you know. Okay, we've got our big chunks of fresh cod. This seems like a nicer piece of fish. Uh, it's never been frozen, unlike the other one. But we were we wanted to use it up because we bought it kind of by accident. Ah, uh, so so that so getting chunks of fish into the bucket for a fisherman's stew. Our codfish cod, codfish calderada. Uh, uh, I like the second piece. Yes, the second. Yeah, the second piece. It. I mean, it feels. It just feels better. But you know, there wasn't so much of the other one. I'm sure it's gonna be okay. Yeah, we um we had a whole thing a while back and got the wrong piece and we said, well, we'll freeze it and we'll use it sometime. And now was the time. Defrosted that one overnight, so it'll be okay. Okay, chunks, chunks of cod. Uh, but anyway, there for Tuesday's dish, uh, I was looking into what to make and uh, two ways to make this one particular dish I'm making for Tuesday. Although the weird part is that neither one was specifically listed as the Timoresque version, Timorese version. Cod. Wash this, and then we're gonna. Put stuff aside, and then we're gonna be moving. But such an interesting little country. Sad, tragic history, but very interesting. And thankfully, in better shape now. Than they were a short time ago. So if anyone wants to make a, a trip to Dili, I wonder if any cruise ships from uh, Australia go up that way. Uh, hello, anyone explain for me this application? Okay, this is Meerkat, it's live streaming, you're seeing me live, hi, unless you're looking at this on YouTube, and then, you know, hello future. Um, you write your comment, and then, uh, these are the people who are watching live right now, and you can follow right here. And that lets you know, uh, you can subscribe to the feed and then you know when the upcoming streams are happening. Um, you, there are other people, the little home button gets you home. They'll, uh, you can comment, you can put little smiley faces and stuff. Uh, and um, then on the main screen, you'll see uh, everyone who's streaming now or you can subscribe to upcoming streams. And then if you have your notifications turned on on your device, you will be advised when the streams are going to start uh, or when they're scheduled. And that is the uh, shortest explanation I can give you of Meerkat. I hope that was sufficient. Um, but you, like I said, you can follow here and you'll know when the other ones are coming up. We are cooking the food uh, of uh, Timor-Leste in Southeast Asia right now. I need to set out a couple things before we actually get crack in on firing the dish. So, one moment while I get out my ramekins. Here. And... Do, 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 do. Quickly. Uh, one teaspoon of paprika. Paprika. Ooh, paprika. Inside joke. Ah. Unless you're a fan of Rosie O'Donnell in the 90s, in which case you'd get the joke. Paprika. Uh, then we have two bay leaves. Now, I don't know. I can't feel like using the uh, Indian bay leaves, which are not your traditional bay leaves. Um, 
because I have them, but it didn't say. You know what? I'm going to. I have them. And it gives it a Southeast Asian. So this is this is me departing from the printed recipe. These are what's called uh, Indian bay leaves, also called cinnamon cinnamon leaves. And you use them like bay leaves. So, and I had them, I bought them for something a while back. I used them last week and uh, I have them here, so I might as well use them now. So yay, bay leaves. Um, just stick them there. One and two. Similar, but different. Little yellow, different. Um, cin uh, cinnamon, 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 cinnamon. Okay, no, cassia leaves. They're called cassia leaves. Um, so I made a substitution. Okay, turmeric. I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time. Turmeric. Hey, Gare Bear, how you doing? Gare Bear, my good man. So nice seeing you. Thanks for coming by. Uh, turmeric, one teaspoon. We are making our codfish calderada, our codfish fisherman stew from Timor Lest, aka East Timor, uh, in Southeast Asia. Uh, one tablespoon of brown sugar. Am I right on that? One tablespoon of brown sugar. Yes, that is indeed what we're doing. Gare Bear, you handsome devil, how are you doing? Okay, we have our brown sugar, which is amazingly still soft thanks to our little clay bear we have in here. Best little investment ever. Okay, brown sugar. So it's giving the sweet, so we've got the spicy and the savory from the turmeric, turmeric and the paprika. And now we're gonna have the sweet. Uh, and we're gonna have the uh, fragrance from the uh, lemongrass. Here's our brown sugar. Ta-da! Fly friends, hello, thank you for liking the restream. Uh, and we are going to, uh, now here's the thing, red Thai chili peppers. I've said this before, I'll say it again. I can't ever freaking find them anywhere. It is quite upsetting to me. Um, even the Asian market lately hasn't had them. And then the global market that has everything hasn't had them. And then someone made some comment about it being them being very expensive or maybe they're rare now, I don't know. Uh, so I don't know what the deal is, but I made the uh, smart move earlier of buying uh, ones in a jar. I love nail polish, hello, thank you for liking the restream. Um, two, so I got the pickled ones. Well, I think they're pickled, but they're in a jar. The Thai chili peppers. So we're uh, going with that. Uh, hold on, I still need that open. Um, I don't want to have to put on gloves just for this. No, I don't. It's just uh, one little... I don't know why I still keep this plastic thingy on it. Now I got my fingers in it. I'm gonna, well, I'm going to wash my hands anyway. Okay, hold on. Okay, we're going with two of these. So basically, since I can't ever find them, I made the point of buying these in a jar. Uh, because I won't need to go hunting for them. They're not, you know, fresh, they're jarred, but you know. Welsh Steph, hello, thank you for liking the restream, how are you doing? Okay, we've got our Thai chili peppers, which have already made my things. Oh, I need to turn on the rice cooker, don't I? Okay, one moment, please. Actually, I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna start, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna start it yet because I'm behind. Okay, six cloves, uh, six cloves. So, I uh, hope I had six of them. Whole cloves, whole cloves, caraway seeds, whole cloves, celery seeds, whole cloves. We need six. Six, 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 six. You got two, uh, four, five, six, okay. 
Uh, and the way this gets put together is interesting. Uh, and lastly, one cup of vinegar. So I don't need any more of you. One cup of vinegar, white vinegar, and I'm gonna pour that in there. Okay, white vinegar. Do, 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 do. Part of me wants to use rice vinegar. But I shouldn't. Should I? You know what? Nah. Uh, I got my olive oil. Uh, not using fish sauce this time, but I will on Tuesday. Tuesday's dish is interesting. Like I was saying, I couldn't find a specifically Timor-esque version of the dish I'm doing Tuesday. Um, I found one that's um, more Malay and one that's more Brunei. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of do the more Malay one. Uh, it's, it's a dish that's obviously popular throughout that entire region. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of variety to it. Uh, the, ones, the thing I heard about the, this particular dish that was on Tuesday, uh, insofar as um, East Timor goes, is they use um, two ingredients, which I'm just going to add as extras. Okay. I think it is time. Time to bust a run. Time to chew a line. No. It's time for the mother joke every week. No. And uh, we're at time to turn on the rice cooker. Yeah, so I don't forget. Okay. Now, finally, uh, we need a bowl. The bowl here that has the vinegar, the white vinegar. We're going to start mixing in some stuff. So here's where the camera comes in. Doo -ba -doo. And our fork. So into here, we've got our vinegar. And into that, we're going to drop in our turmeric. Boom and or paprika and oops or crushed garlic keep getting a shadow and my paper in the shot come on there you go out 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 everybody and the chopped ginger, which is hiding over here. Oh my god, we got some smells happening here. Uh, ginger. The professor and Mary. And, uh, okay. So we got those in there. Uh, and now I need to wash my hands again. Okay, oh my goodness, I still have that water sitting there, don't I? Okay, we're gonna get our big old pot. Big Bertha, because this is gonna take up a whole lot now. You take a little, sh take a step to the left. And then I move to the right. And, um, oh, we need to whisk this um, over here. Something's telling me. Something's telling me, something's telling me that they forgot to mention where to add the brown sugar. They did not tell me to add the brown sugar. Brown sugar needs to be added. I am figuring out that the recipe authors forgot something. Brown sugar. Because they were silly. This happens a lot with these recipes. Like I'll finish everything and go, hey, how, where'd that other ingredient go? And then it doesn't say where it's supposed to go. So I got this sauce here with all those ingredients and it smells amazing. The vinegar and the garlic and the ginger and the turmeric and the paprika. So now here we're gonna heat up this pot and we're gonna add two tablespoons of the olive oil, which is kind of close to the end on that one. One tablespoon, two tablespoons. Yay, I worked off 1,362 calories today. Yay. You run 12 and a half miles, that'll happen. Um, and 
and spread that around. So, uh, nuts. Nuts, 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 nuts. I forgot to do something. Okay, I need to turn that down. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet in a bad way. In a bad way. I forgot to do something very, very important. I forgot to do something very important and sadly time consuming. Uh, forgot to peel the potatoes. I need to do that fast. Fast. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. How fast can I do this? Because now dinner is going to be late. Well, great number 12, so I have miles. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I would have gone further if I had the time. Um, but you know, I, I kind of went a big circle. I get so bored. When you run long distances, boredom is like, you know, becomes a bigger problem than the actual, you know, doing it. Because, you know, you're just like, ugh, ugh, again, the same territory. So I tried to go in a big circle, and the circle was that long. And I wasn't gonna go, like, anymore. Let me wash these off, I'll be right back. So mad I did not take care of this before. Shit, I'm sorry. Dinner is later than I thought. This, honest to God, is so stupid. It says prep time 15 minutes. And you saw it's been an hour and 17 minutes. And I know I talk a lot, but for Pete's sake. And it says 15 minutes, I give myself an hour. You think that would be enough time? think but you'd be wrong. Okay. Uh, okay, fast, 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 fast. I need the magic peeler. Well there's nothing we watch at eight o'clock, is there? No. So we'll be okay. We're gonna be okay. We're gonna be alright. I don't know, I'm sort of torn since um uh, I thought about making a second dish. Obviously, I'm not doing a second dish. But I thought about making a second dish, uh, and we didn't go down to wherever to buy the one ingredient that we needed for it, which is probably a good thing at this point. Um, but I was going to cook that in the 45 minutes it takes to cook this dish. Um, but uh, since I'm not, that leaves me with 45 minutes uh, to kill while I do that. Uh, Twix, thank you for liking the restream. Uh, how am I doing? I'm doing okay. Cooking number uh, country and week number 173 of 193 UN member states as we cook the food of Timor Leste, aka East Timor, um, the uh, tiny nation in Southeast Asia inside the archipelago that is Indonesia, independent nation, the this century's first independent nation. Uh, became independent in 2002 uh, after a protracted war with Indonesia. Uh, they were independent for all nine days before they were invaded uh, by Indonesia in 1999. No, sorry, in 1975. Um, and uh, they finally got their independence in 2002. Things are finally calmed down there uh, after, um, during the war, one third of the population died. Uh, and then after the war when they were declaring independence there was another conflict uh, where um, people took out 100% of their electrical grid and uh, most of the schools and hospitals and so it's been a long way back but the peacekeepers finally were able to leave things are turning around so that's good good for them good for the people of East Timor uh, we, I am making a uh, codfish caldeirada, which is really a Portuguese dish. They were a Portuguese colony for 300 years, um, with a, a Timoresque <coughs> twist. 
uh, cod, uh, fresh cod particularly, is probably not typical of uh, East Timor. Um, but this is what this uh, recipe author, not me, um, suggested. Uh, one of the websites that talked about the different food, and of course is roughly translated from either Portuguese or the Timorese language. Uh, the blog I was reading uh, that talked about the different foods of East Timor, um, it didn't sound like the person's first language was English. So when they talked about the meat that was used in certain dishes, they said a word which struck me as very wrong because they said it was buffalo meat. They used buffalo meat and I thought, buffalo meat? Where the hell do they get buffalo in East Timor? And Portugal wasn't known for buffalo. Where they ever? And I think the person was trying to get beef, the word beef, and mistranslated it as buffalo. Um, so I think that's what they meant. So basically, this dish could be a meat stew, uh, but it could be a, a, a seafood stew. And uh, this, the recipe author suggested using this fresh cod, uh, and the interesting changes from the. Uh, traditionally Portuguese version, or that it, uh, well, you'll see at the end. That's a little surprise. It's a little surprise for anyone who hangs out to when I pour the last piece onto it. Uh, what I'm debating doing, though, is because it takes so long, is uh, yeah, if you guys want, I have a topic or something you'd like to talk about. Uh, do you like fish and chips? I think fish and chips are lovely. I don't have them often, although actually, you know what? On uh, Friday, Friday, I had me some fish and chips. You did, didn't I you? I did, didn't I? Where did I put my knife? Uh, hold on, I've lost my knife. You are here somewhere. Okay, it couldn't have just up and left. Oh. No, that's not it. Oh, it's in the knife block. What a weird place to put it. Uh, uh, John, thank you for the follow. Uh, fish and chips. Actually, I had fish and chips. I had fish with yuca chips, which were delicious. Um, at this one restaurant nearby here, which is uh, surprisingly great. I say surprisingly because it's uh, it's Tommy Bahama. Uh, I don't I don't like chain restaurants, and this is. But it's kind of this kind of a high-end chain thing and the service is out of this world I mean it's service like you've never had before It's like when you have service from a place that they treat you like you're a VIP, you know, and you could be sitting next to Michael Jordan Because he's you know lives around here and goes there um, But uh, they treat everyone like you're Michael Jordan and the food is super great So we went there uh, Just a short walk from here and it was really nice so I had fish and yuca chips. So as a matter of fact, uh, before that I made fish and chips when I cooked New Zealand and I used a very bad recipe for it. I now know what I did wrong. I should not have chosen that particular recipe for those fish and chips. Okay, finally, now that I realize that I goofed on the uh, not cutting these up, I need to wash my knife before it sits here. Uh, but I'll be right back. Okay. Alrighty. Now, we can get back to where we were. Okay. So, ah, uh, heat, oil, pot, into pot. Now we start layering things. And uh, we're doing this in several steps. So layer one, we're taking these potatoes and layering one third of the potatoes in. So one third of the potatoes in. Uh, that's about a third of them. And then we're adding half of the, oh, half of the carrots. Get a camera. Okay, potatoes, then we're adding half of the carrots. Okay. Then, I hope you're getting this. Uh, you're not seeing this. Hope you don't fall in. It's always tricky trying to get you to see without you know, falling into the pot, which has actually happened. 
Okay, this will get filled up. Okay, half of the carrots. Uh, then we're gonna have half of the onions. That's half of these onions. Half of the white, uh, yellow onions. And then half of the red onions. Here. Okay. Okay, so that's you. Oh, loud kitty cat, he's hungry. And uh, half of the fish. But there's people. I can't eat when there's people. Okay, so half of the fish. Whoopsie doopsie, down you go, down boy. Accident turned on the heat. Okay, that's half of the fish. And that's the fish there. And then half of the lemongrass, which is one of you, right there. And then half of the tomatoes. Uh, over here, half of you, there, uh -uh. excitement coming up, uh, then one of the bay leaves, and we're using, again, we're using the, uh, uh, oh, hello from Singapore, hello, greetings, uh, good morning to you in Singapore, happy Monday to you, even though it's still Sunday here. So this is a cassia leaf we're adding, which is a, an Indian bay leaf. We've made a substitution here. Uh, we're layering uh, one of the chili peppers, one of our Thai red chili peppers, right there. Come on. And uh, half of the green and red bell peppers. I've Unfortunately, I mixed these up together, so that's going to make it a little tricky because they're not evenly spread. Uh, uh, Travasha, is that, I'm, I'm Tom saying, Tra, Travelna, thank you for the uh, light there. That's our uh, red and green bell peppers we've added. And now we're gonna add half the shrimp. The shrimp are still in the fridge. Unpackage these. Um, this must be green prawns. Uh, we don't have green prawns. Uh, I got um, Carolina locally sourced uh, large shrimp and uh, about a half a pound of those. So putting in half of the uh, shrimp here. Okay, hold on. You know, we made one of our best, some of our best dishes when we cooked Singapore uh, several weeks ago. So, uh, congrats on having such an incredible cuisine over there. Um, and then half of our vinegar mix, that's you over here. Okay, half of you. Okay. And then half of the cloves, that would be three of the cloves. Three cloves right there. That's what three cloves look like. And then... And then we're starting over again. So we're putting in, uh, do you like the music? Uh, it's okay. This is a traditional music from... Uh, Timor. Uh, so putting a third, another third of the uh, potatoes in here. Yeah, we always try to have traditional uh, music from uh, whichever country. So uh, basically we're redoing the same layers. Uh, we're doing the other half of the carrots on top of that. So that finishes off the carrots. 
then uh, the other half of the onions, that's you. In here, I'm not taking pictures of all those. And you. And then uh, onions, onions, then the other half of the fish. The fish are hiding over here. Fish goes in. And then uh, fish, 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 fish. The other half of the lemongrass, lemongrass EC. Uh, the other half of the tomatoes, tomatoes in. That's it for the tomatoes. And then the other bay leaf there. And then the other chili pepper right there. And then um, the uh, rest of the red and green bell peppers over there. It's getting a very, very full pot. And uh, the other half of the shrimp. Shrimp are sitting somewhere here. The last of the shrimp go in there. Okay, hold on. Gotta chuck some shrimp, some fishy paper. Okay, and that was the shrimp. And now the other half of the vinegar mix. Lastly goes in here, ta-da, and uh, the other half of the cloves, there they go, and uh, the very last thing we had is the last third of the potatoes, that's the last layer of this entire thing here. And then our magic ingredient. Anyone want to guess? You have a 30 second lag. If anyone wants to guess what the last magic heretofore unseen ingredient is, I'm getting it out now. If the sound gives you any clues. The magic ingredient, hold on, you gotta take a picture of the last layer, which was the potatoes. Magic ingredient in three, two, one, beer. Dumping a whole beer on top. Beer. I gave up one of my Coronas for this. Ta-da. Magic ingredient, the uh, the Portuguese version would have white wine. This version uses beer. Uh, so now we're gonna slowly bring this to a boil. And then we're gonna cover it. And let it sit there for 45 minutes. And that is the codfish calderada from Singapore. Set timer for 45 minutes. Then it will be ready. So, uh, that is, the food is cooking. So, here comes the question. I can keep going and tell you, you can watch me watch and I can tell you 45 minutes worth of history and information about East Timor, because I'm guessing you probably weren't among the people who were here at the very beginning of all this. Um, somebody give me a sign if you think that would be cool. Otherwise, part of me is thinking I could just go, and you'll, but you'd miss the plating, which would happen 45 minutes from now. So, somebody give me, give, give me a kind of sign, girl. Show me, the, Lydia, you need to play that for one of your days. Give me some kind of sun, girl. Just show me that you're mine, girl. So I'm gonna wash up. I'm gonna spend the time cleaning. So I'm gonna have the time. But I'm gonna talk about East Timor uh, since I have the time. And y'all seem to be sticking around. So we're gonna start from the beginning. So this is the late show, like on the cruises. You have the early show and the late show. This is the late show. Okay. This is the world. This is the world. This is the world. Esta es la casa. And uh, we are over here in Florida, in the uh, 
in Jupiter, Florida, right over here. And then way over here, this way, it, do, do, I'm looking at this in reverse here, is the island chain that is Indonesia. And then you have, uh, I, I gotta look at this this way, Darwin, Australia, is right about there. And these are the Philippines over here, and this is uh, Indonesia and you know, Borneo, which is part of uh, Malaysia. And uh, halfway between these two is this little crocodile-shaped island right there. And that is the island of Timor. Uh, the island of Timor is divided into East Timor and West Timor. Uh, West Timor and East Timor. Uh, so, going back thousands of years, is Justin with us? Do we see, hey Justin, Justin, hey, 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 hey. Um, so, people arrived, for the very first people arrived in the, on the island of Timor uh, some 30 to 40,000 years ago. Uh, Geraldo uh, uh, Riaga, thank you for the restream. Um, the people came from the area of Sri Lanka uh, in that general part of the world. Uh, then about 20, you know, 17 to 20,000 years later, if you can wrap your brain around that number, uh, people came from uh, Melanesia, the islands uh, nearby. Thank you for the restream. Uh, to the islands of Timor. Then later on, people came from Southeast Asia and China. Um, and uh, then eventually the Europeans arrived in the 1500s. And the Portuguese, and they decided uh, ours they saw that they had sandalwood. Sandalwood is an aromatic wood. And they decided uh, that this is going to be one of their colonies. Because uh, at the time, the, uh, all the European nations are battling for dominance and trade routes and such. And the Portuguese had them uh, Angola and Mozambique and Africa and Macau in uh, China. On the other side of Hong Kong there. And uh, so Timor was going to be their Bought there, and they were going to get uh, trade slaves, and they're going to get sandalwood, and but they didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to um, Timor. Then, uh, for 300 years, they kind of ruled the joint. However, in the 1800s, but 1800s, the Dutch were fighting for uh, dominance, and they uh, had most of what is now Indonesia under their control, and they uh, fought a war uh, with the Dutch. Uh, on the island of Timor, and so uh, they finally signed a treaty saying that the east side and the west side would be separated, minus one little bit. So the east side went to Portugal and became Portuguese Timor, and the west side uh, stayed with the Dutch, minus this one little section. So what is now the nation of East Timor, Timor Leste, we'll get into the name in a minute, um, is about the size of Connecticut on the eastern side of that island plus a little 300 square mile section separated from that on the northeast coast of the island. Uh, which is kind of weird and interesting and strange. Uh, the uh, island is shaped like a crocodile and the creation myth is that at the beginning of time there was a crocodile and a boy saved the crocodile and the crocodile turned into an island uh, as a uh, thank you to the boy for saving him. So that is where they, uh, their story of how their island came to be. The um, Portuguese and the Dutch fought, they had their separation uh, line in the 1800s and then uh, jump forward to the 1940s and World War II and Japan uh, raided the island and took it as part of its territory, and they had it until the war was over, after which it went back to the Portuguese. And the Portuguese continued to hold it until 1975. In 1975, the universe changed for Portugal when their um, government changed and when they uh, became a democracy. And then um, they decided to drop all of their uh, territorial possessions all over the world like in about a second and a half. Not a good way to do that. 
there's no, without a plan, you can't just, you know, drop people. So, uh, that created chaos in a lot of their countries. Timor was one of them. East Timor. Timor-Leste, by the way, uh, the word, the name Timor-Leste is, uh, the word Timor comes from the, a Malaysian word, uh, which means east. They're on the eastern side of an island chain, and that's why it's called east. Timor means east. So they're on the east side of the island, it's called Timor, which means east. The Portuguese decided to call it Timor, and since it's the east side of the island, they called it Timor-Leste, Leste meaning east. So basically the name of the country means east-east. So if anyone asks you a trivia question, what country is called east-east, now you know, Timor-Leste. But therefore, 1975. They become independent. This patriot writes a national anthem for them, which uh, basically translates to homeland. And uh, they were independent for nine solid days. Nine days they were independent. After that, the Indonesian army crossed the border and decided to take the entire island, and that set off the 25-year war, where a third of the population was killed which, uh, as an outgrowth of that, uh, today, Timor-Leste is uh, one of the youngest countries in the world uh, in terms of its population, because so many people didn't make it through the war, they had to kind of start all over again. So they have a very young, young population. Uh, they have, in terms of food, it's not a happy situation. It's getting better but it's not great uh, because they can't really grow a whole lot. They're not very large. They have to import a lot. Uh, they still rely on Portugal a lot and their trading partners, but they have the rainy season and the hungry season because uh, they can't really grow stuff when the, uh, they have uh, tsunamis uh, on the regular, earthquakes and typhoons, and it's just a very, very difficult place to be. Very, very beautiful. Look up pictures of the place. It is gorgeous. It really is. It's a lovely, beautiful place. And it's, you know, getting better. Um, they, uh, after the 25-year civil war, however, they had a referendum in 1999, and everyone voted overwhelmingly for independence, which was uh, a good thing, except uh, the Indonesians weren't too keen on that. And with the backing of the Indonesians, uh, a group of anti-independence uh, Timorese uh, revolted and uh, killed something like 1,400 people, sent 300,000 people as refugees across the border into West Timor, and um, destroyed the 100% of the electrical grid, uh, the schools, the hospitals, everything. It was just a total disaster, and you never heard a word of it, in uh, at least here in the States, um, other than somebody released a benefit album for the people of East Timor. Um, they, uh, the Australians and the UN came in, they sent in peacekeeping troops, and they kind of kept the pace and, you know, <clears throat> put everything back together again. In uh, 2002, they officially became independent. They became the first independent nation of the 21st century. Um, we've only had two so far this century. Um, the other was South Sudan. They're the newest country in the world. These are the second newest. Um, but East, uh, East Timor, Timor-Leste. Uh, Timor-Leste is, uh, is the way it's written officially, uh, even though still people refer to it as East Timor. The same with Cote d'Ivoire, people call it Ivory Coast, but the official demonym is Cote d'Ivoire. So the official demonym here is the Portuguese Timor-Leste. Uh, and thank you for the like and the restream. We're giving a little history lesson here on East Timor since we're waiting for our uh, codfish stew to cook. And now I'm just washing and talking. So, um, 2002, they become independent. Uh, they start to have a, uh, an election. Um, there's uh, more rumblings, and there was the, the threat of more drama. And uh, the Australians and the UN and even the Thai people, for the first time, the Thai people uh, maintained part of the UN force. 
uh, UN Security Force, which they uh, heretofore had never really done before. So uh, Thailand stepping up there. And uh, so they kept the peace. There was an election in 2007. Things worked out. They had another election in 2012, and things worked out well again. They changed, you know, new president, and uh, things are going so well that the peacekeepers could finally leave. So um, things are going better. They had, uh, according to a 2007 uh, projection and an old article, which was looking forward from what is now, you know, nine years ago. Uh, Cubans sent over a whole bunch of doctors to uh, help rebuild, you know, their destroyed, um, you know, healthcare system and brought in doctors and stuff and uh, they're training doctors and they're saying, at least the thing that I read, that they would project that by 2017 uh, there would be more doctors per capita in uh, East Timor than any other country, but you know, I haven't seen anything further that's more recent on that, so take that for what it's worth. The flag, as you see right over my head, is uh, black, orange, yellow, and with a star. The, um, the red is for the blood of their struggle. The yellow represents the colonization, the years of colonization, and the star uh, represents uh, hope for the future and a path uh, to a happier time. So that is uh, kind of what I can tell you about East Timor. The food is very much like the Portuguese, uh, but it also has a lot of influences from the Indonesian. Some stuff I was reading was suggesting that they don't use a lot of spices and other things said they did. I wasn't really clear on that. This one blog uh, talked about the different foods that were in East Timor, and this is where this idea for this dish came from. Uh, I was talking about growing up, this blog writer was talking about growing up with different dishes and uh, they were all very, very Portuguese, like a carne asada, for instance, uh, which is uh, from any Portuguese or, you know, Spanish Latin American nation. Um, I didn't find a version of these Timorese, uh, but I wasn't looking for recipes in Portuguese because that's tricky for me. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free, because I'm kind of running out of stuff to say. Can you do your Tarzan yell? <laughs> oh, no! I can't do my Tarzan yell. Who remembers? Who remembers? Who that remembers? If anyone's even listening, say if you remember the Tarzan yell. No. We're all alone. We're so lonely. We're just waiting. We're waiting for our stew. Stew. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So, I hope if you were hearing that, I hope it was illuminating. If you dropped the phone behind the couch, hello, couch. Yes, it's the old plug in the phone, leave the app running, and walk away. Lavender Femchi, hello. Oh, you do? Yes, well, of course, yes. Uh, and they're offering care we're not the last episodes. I just want to be able to get them individually. Uh, Nick, is that uh, Nick? Nicole, hello, thank you for the uh, restream right there. Uh, we are waiting on our stew right now. Our uh, codfish calderado, calderado? Our codfish stew. It's a Timorese version of a fisherman's stew. I had that too hot. Uh, nah, you're not. I'm um, listening and relaxing. Finally had a hectic day. Uh, oh, you had a hectic day. Yes. Um, wonder. What's the weather like in New York City right now? Huh. Not too cold. 48. Um, not freezing. Uh, I'm gonna give this thing a stir. And I didn't before. But it's idea it's layered though. I don't know if I should. It's specifically layered. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I love. I love the apron. Yes, it's from the fine folks at Funky Fairy. They're not on Facebook. I'm mean, not. They're not on um, Meerkat here often as they used to be. 
Uh, they're on a Periscope a lot um, and Snapchat. But the Meerkat Tees, if they're still uh, have the URL, Meerkat, M-E-R-K-A-T-T-E-E-S dot com. Meerkattees.com. Uh, they uh, have all your embroidery needs. They make uh, uh, backpacks and teddy bears and they'll put your kid's name on stuff. And they're really cool and they're lovely, lovely people and they're in the UK and they'll ship to anywhere. So they're really great. Buy stuff from them. They're really nice. Uh, rain and the builder left the window open all weekend and rain in the house. That's not good. Don't touch food. Thank you. That was a good tip. Uh, thank you for the like, Nicole. Uh, hi, Dad. I see you there. I don't know when you showed up. Um, but if you heard me give the whole song and dance on East Timor, otherwise, I'll tell you in person later. Because um, I darn memorized the thing. So uh, we have our codfish caldurata uh, here, and uh, we have our uh, rice that's uh, now ready. And we still have another 27 minutes on here. Who was that? I'm waiting for that to turn around. Dad, 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 dad figured out the little spinning thing. Yay. Carrie Osborne, hey, thanks for liking the restream. Uh, dad's in a nursing home and he's being treated better. Oh, I, I, I'm glad he's being treated better. Um, that's important. That's important. I hope, I hope things work out for you. That's a, a difficult situation to be in. I'm getting my uh, stuff together. Dad, thanks for the like. Uh, but Tuesday uh, is going to be our second night of cooking the food of East Timor. Uh, then we're doing stuff that uh, is more across the board that I saw that is traditional of East Timor. In that it involves uh, fish, which should be grilled, but I don't have uh, any propane. And I don't like using the grill. I really actually I hate using the grill. Um, because every time I decide to, it decides to rain. Um, so I'm doing this particular grilled fish dish, which, um, is also typical of Brunei and Malaysia. And so I'm doing the two ingredients that are normally, I'm going to add those to the Malaysian version of this. Dad, got the restream. Uh, yeah, you have to monitor. We're grilling. You're grilling people. You're grilling people. <laughs> uh, I was gonna make a joke about Papua New Guinea, where they grilled people until not that long ago. Uh, speaking of Papua New Guinea, uh, what uh, what about the gift pan? You mean the oh the grill pan? Uh, Uh, you mean like uh, like on, on the stove? Grilling pan? I don't have one. That would be nice. Um, we had a discussion about that. It would be expensive. You don't have the room for it. Uh, we had hamburgers on the grill today. Oh, yay. Well, this would be a good day for it. Uh, I was hoping you were the grilling type. I was, I mean, before I started this whole thing. You know, when I was still in that, you know, I don't think I can cook yet. Like, right when we moved here, my parents were so nice to give us a grill, which, you know, I used. And I made dishes a couple times, and we had company, and I grilled a couple times, and it actually worked out well, which is what gave me the confidence to, you know, take the next step uh, on the stove, yes. Uh, so basically, this dish that I'm doing on Tuesday is um, sort of a, it's going to be pan-fried, but in an interesting, very different way. Uh, wish you lived closer. I would loan you. Oh, yes, well. It's sent it by Carrier Pigeon. Um, yeah, we had, uh, here we had, oh, but, but, but Tuesday. I'm doing this fish dish Tuesday along with this one dish, which anyone who's cooked on, online has cooked, um, East Timor, Timor Lest, uh, has done this other dish, which is sort of like a succotash. Can you borrow one? I don't know anyone who I would borrow one from. Um,. There's one friend that I borrowed a piece of cooking equipment from before. Well, you saw me use the the, orange, the uh, apple peeler. I borrowed his and then I bought one of my own and I gave his back. Um, so I don't know if he has one, but in any case, the dish, the way I'm doing, because the Tuesday dish, one person who's 
okay, the whole cooking every country in the world alphabetical order thing, I'm not the first person to do it. Um, and there are of people who have started, of people who have finished, I only know of two, maybe three, that got from A all the way to Z and finished. Uh, one I know for sure finished, the other one I assume finished, because I'm following her along, but if she finished, she finished the years before I started. Um, another one finished in like 2013, I want to say, um, and she's got a book deal and the whole thing. Uh, but anyway, so I'm looking to see what they did. Everyone's done the sort of succotash thing, which I'm doing. If you use cast iron, it'll give you a nice crisp. Yeah, well, you can see. So what this one woman did is that she read a blog about a person in East Timor and they just went out to the beach and they grilled the fish. So she just got tuna and grilled it with uh, garlic butter and that was it. And she said, oh, I don't hear anything about spices. And I said, that's weird because everything else I'm reading is talking about the spices from Southeast Asia. How do you not have any spices in your fish? You can use cast iron given as Yes, I have the cast iron pan. I'm going to use that for this thing. So in any case, she did that one thing, which didn't seem like it was enough. So I kept reading, after kept reading, and I found this other, you know, very specific East Timorese where you take the whole snapper and grill the snapper, and uh, you do great research. Uh, that's good. Um, the uh, But uh, make a curry paste, sort of like what I did. Oh, I do. Well, thank you. Um, uh, make a curry paste much like I made for Thailand and then that's gonna would be for that dish I haven't really decided um, would do it like on the top and the bottom and inside the fish and uh, steam the fish and then grill the fish um, so I'm good with everything right up until the grilling part that's when not so much the, the entire fish head-on snapper seems to be uh, difficult and expensive um, especially for only two people so enter plan B or C in this case, which is this dish, which is a fish dish, which is not specifically grilled, which is made with these same spices in an interesting and different way with one interesting twist, which you'll see on Tuesday, um, assuming I'm making that one. It uses a lot of the same spices from Thailand and other Southeast Asian countries because this one dish is um, eaten in Brunei and Malaysia and you know, so that whole area. Um, their version, and I had not found a recipe for the East Timorese version of that, uh, has, uses, um, uh, red bell peppers, or bell peppers of some kind, and, uh, Thai basil, but that's all I know. It's like they say, this dish, there are several recipes for this dish, and then in East Timor we make this dish, and it has da 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 these ingredients, which are not in any of these recipes that I found. So I'm going to make, you know, the Malay one of this and add these two things to it. Which is my best approximation to what the East Timorese would do. So that and the succotashi kind of thing, which will be squash and mung beans. I'm going to have to go out and find mung beans. Uh, I believe Fresh Market should have mung beans. I do not want to have to go to the Asian market because that's a pain in the butt. Um, so mung beans, I'll have to go hunting for mung beans on Tuesday. Uh, hopefully I can do that. So that's Tuesday. But this weekend, Dad knows we have, uh, off camera, uh, gonna be doing a paella party, uh, for my mom's birthday. So I'm gonna be remaking the paella I made for Spain. You can check it out along with everything else at cliffyland.com. Uh, check out the Spain, uh, entry and you'll see what the paella looked and tasted like. It was really great. Um, the, uh, I'm making a, I got a bigger paella pan because there are going to be 11 people here. I think. Yeah. 10 or 11 people here. Um, so we're going to make paella. Hopefully it's going to serve that many people. Uh, and since it probably won't serve that many people, I'm also going to make my mumu, which will be the third time I've made my mumu. Uh, what is my mumu, you may ask? My mumu is uh, from Papua New Guinea, again, at cliffyland.com. You can see uh, what it was. Mumu is, you know, made in this same sucker. Uh, is from Papua New Guinea, a neighbor, or a, 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 in the general neighborhood of East Timor. 
uh, very typical of uh, Melanesia, Polynesia, usually in a pit or in a drum. Uh, it's cooked for, you know, a lot of people. In the Caribbean, it would be called a cook-up with uh, different ingredients. But this, um, you know, Melanesian Oceana version, uh, which I cooked for Papua New Guinea, um, but it could just as well be from New Zealand, that um, uh, is a plantain covering the outside of the pot, or the inside, rather, and then layers. And there's a layer, and if you, you can see this, I did this on Meerkat, so you can check that out too if you feel so motivated. Uh, and it's on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, plug. Um, the, uh, it's a layer on the bottom of carrots and uh, uh, yucca and uh, yucca, cassava, and sweet potatoes, and then a layer of chicken thighs and a layer of uh, papaya, bananas, and pineapple, and then a layer of uh, onions, and then a layer of, uh, what was the other meat? Pork, and then a layer of spinach, and then it's all, you know, seasoned all the way through, and then covered up, and then it's on the stove for 45 minutes, in the oven for five hours, five solid hours. Um, and slow cooked and it is really great. When I made it for us, I thought, wow, that's surprisingly good. Um, and then I made it for company for our Christmas party and everyone just loved it. They were crazy nuts for it, which I was kind of surprised because I thought it was good, but it was great. Um, and it serves a lot of people, so that. So I'm thinking the pay and that. I gotta make a salad, uh, which is not as easy as it sounds. Uh, I've made a number of salads recently, uh, but um, I just don't want to make any, the, my, those, the salad I want to make is the, the one I would think of making, but I probably can't, is the one I made for South Sudan, which is the same one I made for the party, the Christmas party, which was um, tomatoes and peanut butter dressing with uh, some, some chilies, you know, mixed in there. And it sounds weird, but it tasted really great, and there was zero of it left after our party. And one of our friends said, if I saw that on a menu, I would never have touched, I would never have ordered it, but that was so good. I had no idea. So, but I don't know if I can, because some, you know, they don't like weird stuff. They, well, I'm afraid people won't touch it. I'm afraid they're going to get spicy. So I got to find another salad that won't be too much trouble, because the pie is going to be trouble. Uh, but I'm gonna be cooking all day Saturday So uh, but that's just gonna be off camera because if I have to do it on camera Then I'll be doing this and not this and I need to be doing this <sighs> But that's this week uh, So this week is East Timor right here today and Tuesday then next week uh, We take our last trip to West Africa, which is kind of hard to believe because uh, there are 54 countries in Africa, more than any other continent. It's not our last trip to Africa, but our last trip to West Africa, uh, where there are so many countries packed in. And when way back before Meerkat, when we did the letter C, we had you know one after the other from Cameroon, Central African Republic, Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Cameroon, you know, Cote d'Ivoire. There was just one after the other after the other, and it was very hard getting all these things all you know separated. So they didn't have it's going to be awesome try to enjoy the party too yes i will i will try to do that um and uh but uh i need to but there's so many west african countries so many african countries there's so many west african countries uh that it was kind of hard to say what was different from the other but our very last west african country is next week so uh i'm gonna have to pull a rabbit out of the hat and try to find one more thing and uh something tells me that i might have to bite the bullet again and make one last attempt at cooking goat before meerkat i tried to cook, cook goat twice was it twice or three times i remember twice twice and both times it was an utter disaster um I followed the recipes and they just, no, it did not go well. And from what I read, and Dad has talked to me about this, uh, uh, but um, 
everything I read is that to cook the goat, you have to cook the goat slow and for a long, 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 long time to have it break down the the, the cellulose to um, make it, you know, eatable. When I cooked it before, it was not. And the second time I was trying to fix it from the way I did the first time and even then I did not succeed, so. So that's going to be, anybody, anybody? I will say goat is hard to do. Yeah, and I like goat, I like eating goat. We were in, was it uh, Curso? Aruba? Curso. Curso. We were in Curso and everyone got off cruise ship and everyone goes in the usual, you know, tacky tourist things. And I was thinking, no, I don't want to go there. I want to eat food that the Curso people have. Make sure you season and you need to kind of boil it. Yes, for a long time. My dad talked about something with maybe lemons, lots and lots of lemons. Um, every time I mention goat, he'll, he gives me the, you know, the little lowdown. But anyway, we went uh, around the corner from all the crappy things in Curacao. Uh, I mean, the Curacao is a lovely place, but all the touristy stuff, cruise ship stuff doesn't interest me. I don't need to buy jewelry. I don't buy watches. Don't be scared to turn up the heat. Oh, good tip. Thank you. Um, make sure, yeah, uh, but went around the corner from all the stuff and we followed where all the employees like go to eat their lunch and there's a big warehouse thing with just lots of stalls and you know just pick a stall and order the food so it was just weird I was like the only white person in this whole you know joint but I was thinking I want no I want what you're having I want that goat give me so I got a big plate of goat and it was really good was it good I remember really thinking it was good yeah I was thinking, now this is how you do goat. Um, so, so that's, anyone, um, I made the error of low heat. My Jamaican something said, let it bubble. Ah, uh, I was like, no, it will be tough. Ha, huh, I was wrong. Ah, interesting, yeah. Interesting. I'm gonna look up more stuff about it, but uh, that's gonna be Togo. T-O-G-O, -O, Togo. To go to Togo. Togo, that's next week. Just keep the temp up. Mm -hmm. This, uh, meanwhile, is simmering for another 11 minutes. Ouch. Ouch, 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 my watch is getting warm. Home health aid. So that's, oh, 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 oh got it now. Yes, H-H-A, got it. My wrist got all warm from being next to the stove. Uh, you're the expert and it's your show. Uh, no, I, I do my best. Um, There's gonna be a lot of food. I'm gonna have lots of leftovers. It is 8.08 now. So it's already like 15 minutes past where I should have had dinner ready. But I'm gonna get the plates ready in any case. And uh, it's a stew, but I don't. It's not a whole lot of sauce. In fact, there's like there's just that beer in there. So it's going on plates instead of stew bowls. Not stew bowls? No, I adore curry of goat. Ooh, yeah. Hmm. No, because there's the only liquid is what's released from the tomatoes and that beer. Even though I do see bubbling. I honest to God see bubbling. Oh, there's that vinegar water thing. That's like about a cup of water. That's still not a lot, especially because of the volume of how much is in here. And I'm gonna let it sit there for the entire time, the nine more minutes. I'm gonna let it sit. Cause uh, I wanna make sure it's all done. I'm looking at the... You know what I didn't see? I didn't see salt and pepper. I did not see salt and pepper. Uh, my home spun life. Hello, thank you. Wendy Jean, thank you for the uh, follow there. Follow back, y'all. Follow back, y'all. There was no salt and pepper mentioned. There's plenty of other flavors uh, in there. Uh, turmeric, paprika, garlic, ginger, uh, sugar, brown sugar, uh, lemongrass, uh, bay leaf, chili peppers, um, but did not mention salt and pepper. 
Oh, it's the salt and pepper you're thinking. Yeah. Um, one more time. What did you say? Is it burning? No, I don't think it's burning. No, it's bubbling. Bubbling. You can add aftertaste. It's me. Hello. Hello, Andy Jean. Hello. Ink Panther. Hello. Thank you for the like. Hey, Rob. Thank you for the like. Uh, Justin, how was the weather where you were today? Was it not, was it cloudy where you were today? It was cloudy here. I got to run 12 and a half miles, yay! I'm glad, you know, there isn't too much, uh, East Timor music on Apple Music, surprisingly. So I don't know what I'm going to do on Tuesday. I have to hear the same... East Timor, and the same Timorese chanting on Tuesday that I heard today. I'm sure you're all loving it. East Timor, Timor Lest. Oh, um, so if you didn't hear the story when I said it um, at the beginning. It looks yummy, thank you. Um, uh, East Timor, when, um, my global traveling friend who went to every country in the world without flying and got the Guinness World Record for that, um, he was, had to, everything was all by land, so he was in West Timor, had to get his visa to get into East Timor, he got into East Timor, but this is when the UN peacekeepers were still there, so he was just kind of freaking out thinking there was like soldiers with guns, you know, every 10 feet there was like UN peacekeepers, you know, armed and, you know, everywhere. Uh, and the, the idea that, you know, violence could break out at any moment. So it was kind of a dicey situation. And he's, you know, going about, and then he's, there's a large gathering, and he's there, and then he bumps into and starts talking to this guy, who is the president. He is talking to the president, and he's taking pictures with the president. He's thinking, there's so many UN peacekeepers here, and here's this random guy with a backpack. It's just, like, gone up, and he's like, mm, like, mm, like this with the president. And he's like, he could have had a bomb on him or whatever, and like, then no more president. Um, no one, like, stopped him. He said that was just, like, the weirdest thing. So, weird how things work. Uh, six minutes. Six minutes to get fresh your own. Uh, uh, uh. Six minutes. Dad! It happens all when you click on the thing to see, especially the person you're looking at, and you accidentally hit you know, unfollow and you hit follow again. But it gives me a point, so yay. <laughs> Not that I'm looking for points. Necessarily. Um, five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, I'm gonna scoop out that rice, but I don't want it to get cold. Just like a Top Chef challenge, like knowing not to do things too early. So we saw Room last night, we went to uh, the Seafood Festival, which is uh, around the corner this weekend. Trashy, not doing it again. I mean, they had bands playing, you know, the usual collection of Jimmy Buffett Eagle songs, fine, you know. It seems to be the national anthem of our town is, you know, Jimmy Buffett Eagle's, you know, classic rock. Oh, and, you know, their food stalls with, you know, the same stuff and... You know, two kitty rides and kind of trashy. You know, signs for businesses with, you know, sexual double entendre names, which is, you know, stupid. Um, so, uh, now we know what the music coming across the fence was. Uh, we got to see it, now we don't see it again. Uh, and uh, didn't lose any parking over it either, so... Oh, it brings in a tax, tax base. Four minutes, four minutes, four minutes, four minutes, people. Four minutes. Waiting on our stew. Our fish stew, our fisherman stew, our codfish caldorado, which is codfish and shrimp with uh, all sorts of flavors that I need to taste. I will need to taste. Uh, and I don't want the rice just sitting there. Um, I think I'm gonna make the mounds of the rice. I think I'm going to try that with all the ramekins here. Do 
it's weird that it's served with rice and crusty bread. I don't have crusty bread, but this got potatoes. So again, rice and potatoes, two starches. Yes, we have no bananas. Three minutes. Okay, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start getting my rice together. Uh, uh, the the uh, LA food and wine was steamed was steamed this fall. It was awesome. I like to go. Oh, I think you mean streamed. Uh, that uh, it sounds wild. Um, I've never been to an actual food and wine festival. I've been to a a little beer festival down in West Palm Beach, which was you know acceptable. I didn't hate it much, except for the people. Uh. Well, there's, you know, it's Florida. There's people outdoors with cigars thinking that they're cool. And then I get, like, very angry. And I have to keep moving. People freak me out. It's like outdoors. You know, standing in line, getting pushed. And you know what I forgot to do again? I never, ever fluff my rice when I should fluff my rice. Okay. It got a little... Uh, California, yes. It was nicer than the one at Disney. Ooh. Oh, that's right. I've been to the Disney Food and Wine. What am I talking about? But I haven't been to any... Uh, I only went to one event at the Disney Food and Wine. This woman giving a... A Puerto Rican chef, actually, was giving a whole rigmarole on... I thought on Puerto Rican cooking. It was not on Puerto Rican cooking. I mean, she was a Puerto Rican chef, but it was just a generic, you know, chicken dish she was doing, and I was a little bit disappointed. I thought she was going to do something interesting, something Puerto Rican. But, you know, these things at the Disney, at any food and wine festival, like, tickets are expensive, and the, you know, fancy chefs sell out quickly, and they cost a lot of money, and I go, yeah, no. And got that kind of disposable income. I gotta spend it all on weird ingredients for my global cooking challenge. Okay. Oh, there was this interesting dish um, that I did not make. I don't like crowds. Yeah, I really don't. I can't. I, I have real trouble dealing with it. I take lots of lot, lots of mental preparation ahead of time. But no, there was this dish that I forgot to mention that I I couldn't do for East Timor for reasons which will be obvious. But uh, it said um, the amount of uh, meat you use depends on how many people you have, da da da, how many people you have to help you. And I said, this is weird. And it said, uh, you take two giant bamboo sticks and empty them out, you know, and then into one, you pour in your rice, your glutenized, uh, which we have over there and uh, coconut milk, and then jam in banana uh, leaves on the end. And then the other sticks, you fill in with the meat, which is seasoned with salt and pepper and nutmeg, and then shove in the banana leaves and stick them all in the fire with the meat in the inside and the other on the outside, and then take it all out and cook it. And I'm thinking, well, I don't have a big fire and I don't have big banana sticks, a big bamboo sticks. Uh, it was like $25 or less, not too bad. I've seen 50 plus tickets in New York City. It, listen, the Miami Beach one is happening. We looked at some of those prices. They were ridic, ridiculous, ridiculous. Okay, time's up. To look at our stew. That's mmm. Smells fishy. Smells of lemongrass. Mmm. So many good things. Okay, I'm gonna have to taste the sucker. Yes, I is. Okay. I don't know how I taste something that's like 16 layers. I don't know how one does that. I'm going to try to take the potato. See what that tastes like. The potatoes could be hot. Oh my goodness, I ran out of music. Oh, yeah, I'll find her. Huh?
Help! Hold on. It is so late. It's so late I ran out of fitness.